What's up, everybody? Jack from Half Chrome. This is the uh, Tyro 119. It is a pretty interesting do-it-yourself kit from uh, Yashin. It's 119 bucks, like all the Tyro models. The numbers tell you how much it costs. 250 uh, millimeter quad from um, motor to motor. Uh, it is a uh, five millimeter thick carbon on the arms there that's pretty good uh, these motors are big and beefy you can see there they are uh, 2407 1850 kvs um, the uh, camera there is a caddx turbo 16.9 it is a 1200 tvl line camera other things you're going to want to know we got a bl heli s 4-in-1 ESC, it's be a hell yes, and now that I look at the specs, that's why uh, my 32 wasn't working. Anyway, um, F4 flight controller with a barometer and a plug for the GPS, and uh, up there on top you'll see uh, the VTX is switchable from pit mode to 2200 and 600 milliwatts. But uh, right here, the star of the show, this GPS unit, hard to get a GPS unit on a drone for less than 200 bucks, and this one's just barely over 100 it is from the Tyro line, which means it's a kind of easy to build yourself kit. It's actually the fourth Tyro quad I built. I built this here. That's the 129. Uh, it's a seven inch. Look at those huge props. Um, and then over here, I've got my Tyro Whoop. Uh, I put this together with the uh, Tyro 79 kit. Generally just a three inch drone, but I had it an extra Cinewhip frame, so I put it on there. So I put it together. So this is a do it yourself kit. $119. Pretty fun. Flies 3 to 6S. I flew it on 4. Uh, flew it on 6. I'd recommend somewhere between 4 and 6. Kind of depends on your skill level. Um, and building it was actually pretty darn easy. Things just kind of snapped together. Not a whole lot of soldering to do. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do all that here in just a second. Definitely something to look at. But over here, I've got another one you got to see. This here is my Good Venture Drones uh, motors on a DJI camera system uh, with an iFlight frame. But anyway, today the star of the show is this Tyro 119. We're going to go ahead and look at how to build it. Here we go. All right, so this is the Tyro 119. Let's take a look and see what we get inside the box. We got our doll 6045 six inch prop. So this is uh, big, but not quite as big as the seven inchers on the Tyro 129. Our motors, these are pretty big, uh, 2407 motors, and they're clockwise and counterclockwise. Now, uh, that's not the way the motors spin. You can switch any motor. Uh, that's the nuts, right? The nuts are either clockwise or counterclockwise. That just kind of helps them to stay on. But pretty gigantic motors. That's pretty awesome. We've got four of them. We got a TBS style antenna. Got our frame. This is a nice thick frame for a seven inch quad. Sorry, six inch quad. We've got a GPS unit in there. Zip ties. Got a four in one ESC uh, with a capacitor on there. This is the only soldering that you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to solder the motors. Got our VTX here, um, XS5804. Uh, hopefully this will do smart audio. We will see. I believe it is switchable. Uh, I think up to 400, but I'll have to double check on that. Some standoffs for my uh, antenna. This is my F4 flight controller. This is what makes the Tyro series nice. You see these plugs? I can plug in my camera, my VTX, uh, my receiver, all that stuff just kind of plugs in. I don't have to solder on this tiny little board. That makes life a lot easier. Some nuts and bolts, hardware, battery strap, and a Caddx Caddx camera. This is the Turbo Micro F2. This is a pretty solid camera, so that's good to see. All right, let's put it together. All right, step one is putting this frame together, um, the bottom plate. Uh, you can see that tiny little X structure goes in the bottom. Uh, we've got some press nuts that go on this top plate here. Uh, the longest screws go in the middle, and then we've got some lock nuts that go right here. Then, once you've done that, 
All right, once you've put the frame together, um, then you're gonna add these standoffs here. Uh, put your motors down. I put in two, not three screws. I find that best. Um, and then go ahead and place the all-in-one ESC on there uh, so that it's easier and it stays in place while you're doing your soldering. Now, I'm gonna solder uh, my motors here and my battery connector there. And thankfully, that's all I actually have to solder, which is nice. That's what makes these Tyro builds so sweet. Now, keep in mind, these motors uh, have clockwise and counterclockwise nuts. And you're going to go ahead and set it up like this. If you don't, is it the end of the world? Nope. Uh, because, um, you know, it's just the threads that are clockwise and counterclockwise. The motors can spin any which way. You just have to set that up in BL Heli. All right, let's get to soldering. Now, I'm not gonna do a soldering tutorial, nor I'm gonna show you the soldering. Uh, it's not super fun, but uh, the plan is to pre-solder all of these, pre-solder this, and then get them on there. Okay, so you can see that I have soldered on the motor wires here, as well as the battery lead. So now what I can do is I can go ahead and start adding the components to the flight controller and plugging stuff in. Camera, VTX, GPS, receiver. This is my ESCs. These are my ESCs. They plug in like so. And voila. All right, it's kind of hard to see here, but there are three little pads. And uh, I'm using an XM Plus receiver, so I had to solder these two here. Uh, for SBUS. If you're doing a PPM, you'd solder these two. So you can kind of see there that little solder. That's what it did. Now I'm going to go ahead and put on the VTX stack. Again, more standoffs. I'll tuck the wires underneath. And this time, since that is the top, I'm going to go ahead and put the nuts on. Okay, so let's take a closer look at where we're at now. We're almost done. I've soldered on my receiver. This is an XM Plus, um, and I'm running those two antennas out at the back here. I put on this little standoff, or 3D, 3D printed mount, I actually I should call it, uh, when I'm gonna attach my antenna. Now, this is super important. Never turn your quad on. Uh, power under VTX without this antenna that could well that could root it uh, So I've got that in place. I've got my camera in there. Uh, I find it easiest to put the screws in uh, these little mounts and then uh, Get it into place. You see I don't have my top uh, I don't have my top plate on and I don't have my props on and that's because um, I've got to bind my receiver right to do that. I'm gonna hold this button down right here as I plug in the quad then I put my remote into bind mode. Should be good to go. This is D16. Okay, so here she is, uh, pretty much put together. Uh, still got to go into beta flight and show you how to do some of that. But let's go over the last few things. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to add the camera. You can kind of see how uh, these uh, carbon fiber standoffs go in. Uh, I suggest uh, starting with one screw to kind of hold it in place. And then once you kind of figure out how you want your camera angle, you can go ahead and put in double screws um, you can see I'm gonna bottom mount my battery I really wanted to put it on the top um, but uh, just kind of the way that it works uh, with the GPS and not having a great place to put it uh, you need the GPS to be free and clear and point to the sky so uh, they actually include a little piece of uh, 3m double-sided sticky tape uh, so I ran it right here um, I have room up in the front if I want to add my session style camera or GoPro or whatnot um, yeah, I'm gonna bottom mount the battery. Uh, the battery slap, strap will slide right in here. Uh, other things you gotta remember, uh, don't forget to add your extra screws, tighten everything up, and uh, yeah, then you're good to go. Of course, got this top plate on there. Just looks like a good little quad. 
Before we jump into beta flight, let me just show you something that's coming. This, uh, this is a DJI FPV build. Super excited about this. Look at those motors. Beautiful team, good venture drone motors. Uh, excited to fly this thing. Uh, yeah, this is an iFlight frame built for DJI. Um, the flight controller is built for DJI. It's almost plug and play, uh, but yeah, this thing gonna be sweet. So uh, stay tuned for that. But first, let's figure out this tyro. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and connect to Betaflight here. And uh, let's just kind of take a look at uh, the settings you're gonna want to do. Um, you know, the ports, we got a Serial RX on UART 2. Uh, the GPS on UART 1, all that should be set up for you. Config is, uh, you know, nothing you really need to do here. If you want to go ahead and give it a name, uh, we're going to call this the Half Chrome Tyro 119. Um, you know, everything else here, like I said, is set up. Uh, the only things I generally will change are here. The air mode, if it's not on or the RX lost, you can change the tone if you want, but uh, that's useful, right? You can turn the uh, ESCs into beepers. Let's go ahead and save and do that. Okay, battery and power, I didn't do anything here. Uh, PID tuning, uh, again, I'm not changing anything with my PIDs, uh, although I haven't flown it yet, so uh, first sure you wanna do that. PIDs are gonna matter depending on what size battery you're gonna fly. Uh, the receiver, just make sure that your receiver uh, is set up. I have RSSI and AUX12. That's because I'm using an XM+. Plus. Um, then modes, uh, this is important. Um, go ahead and uh, set your arm and your angle switch. Uh, you want a GPS rescue on some auxiliary. I put mine on four, um, and then I have a beeper. Uh, in this case, for me, it's on AUX5. Um, motors, uh, ah, we do have to check the motors. So we're gonna go ahead and um, to do that, make sure you don't have the props on, then you're going to go ahead and run the master here. Um, you're going to have to plug her in. And then you can run the master here. You'll hear the motor spin up. And you can check that they're moving in the right direction. So as I check my motors, I have to fix motors one and two, they're moving in the wrong direction, um, which is a bummer, but not a big deal. Um, OSD, you can set what you want. Um, I highly recommend your RSSI value and the main battery voltage, um, super important. GPS speed, GPS stats, that's up to you. Warning, super important. I also like average cell voltage, and you can kind of move these things around where you think most appropriate. Kind of just move like that. All right, a lot of this stuff is important and good to know. Oh, this is I like right up here. Okay, put all my GPS info up at the top. All right, so now I've got that how I like it. Click save. Black box, it don't do anything. CLI, if you want to check stuff. But this is important. Got to enable. Uh, expert mode, and we'll go to the fail safe to. Uh, you know, gotta go to this fail safe to turn the GPS on. Um, and right over here, uh, GPS rescue, you wanna make sure that that's on and fail safe only. Save and reboot. All right, so I went ahead and uh, reversed my motors, the motors that need to be reversed, and using the BL Heli configurator. I like this one, it's easy, uh, plus my uh, standard BL Heli 32 suite was uh, acting goofy, so uh, I try this one, you connect, you go ahead and read setup. Now my props are off, that is super important. Um, then I went ahead and click reversed on two and four, which are the two motors that I needed to uh, change. Now uh, I do also like to come in here and change some of these settings, these uh, beacon delay um, Make it two minutes, right? Then it just starts beeping. Uh, if it's been plugged in for two minutes and you haven't done anything, um, and then, uh, ah, gosh, I forget which one makes it louder, beep strength or beacon strength. We're just gonna move them both up to 200. Uh, not quite 200, just make it a little bit louder. Um, you know, just so you can hear it. 
Anyway, then you're going to click uh, right setup over here. And uh, we're going to go back into um, bid flight. Make sure the motors are spinning correctly. Um, you know, again, props have to be off for all this stuff. I prefer uh, actually using a piece of paper. I put a piece of paper on uh, the propeller, or I'm sorry, on the motor, and let the uh, motor hit the propeller, make sure it uh, is spinning in the correct direction, and then we can go fly. All right, so hopefully that was uh, helpful. We're going to go ahead and get this thing out and fly it for you. You can see some of the footage I've flown it. Uh, it is fun to fly. Uh, like this six inch, uh, maybe uh, add a different receiver so you get a little bit more long range might be my suggestion. But hey, what do you guys think? What do you think about this Tyro 119? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Happy flying.